And welcome back to the Leadership Fan Podcast, where we explore the leadership journey together and seek to influence and encourage aspiring leaders making the climb. I'm Joe Linhart, your host, and I'm excited to be back with you today talking leadership. We've got a great guest with us today that I'm pumped to talk to. He's one of my dearest friends, if not the dearest friend I have, and but he's also a leader and a businessman, a sales guy. Um, he's just a guy who's great with professional development. And so we're going to pick his brain a little bit today. Before we do that, I want to go into a little bit of this week's leadership drill. You know, if you're familiar with our videos on LinkedIn, every single week, we talk about topics that impact your leadership and the culture within your business. And We've talked about a variety of topics across the spectrum for the last, I don't know, 55 weeks or so. Today, I want to talk to you before we get into talking to Brian. I want to talk to you about trust. Trust. I have often talked to my students that I teach at the university level. Um, I teach them leadership. We talk about trust being the lifeblood for leaders. Without it, it's my view that you're lost from a leadership perspective. And I know Brian can relate to that as well. And so I want to tell you quickly, just a couple of quick stories like I would on our normal leadership drills. I can remember a particular day at a big company that I was working at and I was walking with one of my directors into her office. And this particular person, she um, was very opinionated and she would give me pushback, which I actually grew to love. She was a critical thinker as well and wanted solutions, much like our guest today does. And I want to talk to you a little bit about what she said to me next. She said, you know, Joe, she said, I'm frustrated with the downhill leadership and I understand it. It's not you. I'm not mad with you. The thing about you that I like so much is that you're earnest. I said, earnest. Never heard anybody call me earnest before, Brian, you know? And, uh, but she said, you're just, you're honest. I know what you're telling me is not BS. It's just, it's just real talk. You're, you're not going to lie to me, you know? And I walked out of her office that day thinking, that's who I want to be. That's always who I want to be as a leader. I want to be truthful. I want my people to depend on what I say is the truth, you know? And you can get a lot further in leadership. For those of you who are growing right now, um, when you take that stance, fast forward really quick, same company, different leader. Five years later, I'm separating with this particular company. And this particular guy says to me, you know, Joe, what I was so much so impressed about and so happy about was that when you came here, you you told us you were going to do this, that and the other. You had all these promises. He said, I'll be dang if you didn't do it. You actually did what you say you were going to do. Wasn't perfect. We all, we had our wars and our battles along the way, but that's what I take away from your leadership. And I was so proud of that. And I wanted to share that with you leaders today, because if you do what you say you're going to do, boy, you get a lot better results and a lot more mileage out of your leadership messages, right? And so with that, let's transition into someone who knows a little bit about what I'm talking about because he's done it with me over the years. I want to introduce a dear friend of mine, Brian Willett, to the, to the podcast today. And I'm not going to take up any more airspace and take the air out of the room. I'm going to let him tell you um, about his past, his career. I can just tell you, I'm extremely proud of this guy. And I told him recently, we went on a trip together and I said, Hey man, you used to follow me. Now I follow you. It's funny how that works. I'm still older than you, you know? So Brian, what's up, man? Hey man, glad to be here. Glad to, uh, be on your podcast. I'm excited for what you're doing here and what your mission is, uh, to reach this next generation of leaders and uh, inspire them to, to want to do more and want to be better leaders. So I'm really glad to be, be on here and talk about leadership. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I know that you're a sponge when it comes to professional development 
And uh, leadership is one of those areas you spent some time. I think I remember when we both uh, got really into John Maxwell many, many years ago. Uh, and so, uh, listen, let's talk about your past a little bit. I know that you've been in high-level leadership um, in higher education. Uh, you've been in um, sales. You've, uh, gosh, you're an investor in, in real estate. Talk to me a little bit about your, your, your career. Oh, man. So... Yeah, I mean, if we go way, way back, you know, I graduated high school, was a nice C-plus student. Uh, Me too. Flunked out, flunked out of community college uh, and, you know, went to school and got an electronics associate's degree. Uh, went to work, um, did that for a couple of years. Uh, and then luckily my employer paid me, uh, paid for me to go back to school. And so I went back to school and got a bachelor's degree in, in, in business. Uh, and that led me into, you know, as you said, working in higher ed, uh, obviously, you know, getting connected with you. And then ultimately it led to me, you know, getting into my first, you know, leadership position. And so uh, I was a leader, uh, you know, for that uh, particular system for probably 13 years and uh long time yeah and so i guess managed the staff of people anywhere from you know i think starting out with six or seven people up to probably 130 people i guess um wow and you know our particular university uh also owned and operated a, a you know a leadership training company dale carnegie training and so I uh, was blessed enough, and, and, and as you know, the, to uh, to go through all that training and be exposed to all that outside training and development while my career was growing within the institution. And then I ultimately moved over to that line of business and operated the two Dell Carnegie training franchises for all of Kentucky and Southern Indiana and the Cincinnati area. And then moved to Florida and ran the uh, Southwest Florida Dell Carnegie Train uh, franchise for a couple of years. Um, and then ultimately made my way back to uh, being in sales full time as, a, as an individual contributor. And so, you know, that's where I am today. And along mm -hmm. the way, uh, I've been able to take you know, my money and invest it into real estate. And so uh, that's a part of the journey as well. And so uh, presents all kinds of leadership challenges in the investing world. It's amazing the changes that we see people go through over the years. And I always talk about in leadership that this thing that we're talking about leadership is about the journey, right? And um, I know now you live in Dallas, Texas. It's amazing to me. Two Kentucky kids here. We Neither one of us live in Kentucky anymore, by the way. But, right. you know, the journey has been for you, um, gosh, I think pretty remarkable. The the growth and the success, um just the, the, the foundation you've built for your life is, is just phenomenal and uh, just uh, so impressed. And so I want to ask you, I remember when you got into leadership, uh, I was there, f thankfully. You'd probably done a little leadership before we got together, but this was a whole different thing because you were taking on regional reps across the country. You were taking on uh, a number of staff who, who we all have high regard for, but let's face it, they were a lot older than you. A lot, a lot of cases. And so people that were probably, you know, really stuck in their ways as well. And you had to come in and you had to be that leader that changed things and had higher expectations, built processes. And, and you did that. And so I think I'm going to let you talk to it. Trust probably paid, played a big role in that. And so I don't know if you could just kind of dig in a little bit and, and think about how did you build trust with that team? Because I know you did. Yeah. Well, you know, always, you know, I think I've told you this before, but, you know, obviously I went to school, got a, a bachelor's degree, and then ultimately an MBA and, and took a lot of leadership classes. But I didn't really get my first leadership position until after I had the MBA. And here I am now in leadership, and I, and I learned that I really didn't know much. I mean... You know, it was all theory up until that yeah. point in time. 
And and so obviously under your leadership, your guidance, your mentorship, it helped a lot, right? Because I was able to watch for I don't know, maybe a year and a half or two years how how to do it. But then ultimately getting put into that position and, and now it's up to me to do it. And so, you know, I think the biggest way to do it is is time. You gotta spend time with people. Uh uh, I always say timing and being curious, you know, mm. and so, you know, again, we've all heard the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule, and when I would spend time with people, I would spend 80% of that time talking to them about them, mm. uh, and then 20% of the time talking about, you know, the work that needed to be done or the work that they were doing. Uh, you know, and we had something, you know, a touch base call or whatever. And that was kind of my mission is to spend that 80% of the time really talking to them about life, you know. And again, we're not around these people every day. So, you don't, you know, they're, they're, there's more to talk about maybe. I don't know. But, um, you know, spend that 80-20 role, you know. Um, you know, we so, talk about that a lot of times in my videos on LinkedIn and here on the podcast. We talk about this people first philosophy uh what a concept you put 80 percent of the conversation on them and their life and their kids and their problems and they're more interested in what you have to say than aren't they yeah absolutely and, and so when you get to that 20 percent you know it to me it always just kind of flowed naturally um uh, even when you had to have a hard conversation right Productions down, or this is not being done, or that's not being done. Why are we not getting this done? It makes that twenty percent of that conversation that's focused on the business much much easier. I believe. Wow, well said. You know, Brian, we talk a lot of times about this world we live in, and you know, we might be talking about faith or politics or business, whatever it might be. You and I talk probably almost every day in some way, but I would just ask you this, you know, it doesn't matter what your politics are, in my opinion. To me, as I look at leadership and leaders around the world right now, I believe this world is jacked up in a lot of ways because we're lacking leadership true leadership which tells me we, we're, we're developing less leaders from youth all the way through and i just wonder for you right now why do you think we're lacking leadership right now in this world maybe you don't maybe you think we have amazing leaders i have a feeling i know what you think though uh give yeah. me some thoughts on that you know it's i, I thought a lot about this you know coming into this and you know the first word that I wrote down was courage, mm. you know, and, and, you know, where does courage come from, right? And courage means I'm going out on faith and I am putting something on the line, right? I'm putting myself out there. That takes courage to do, right? I, when I, when I put something out there, I could lose something, right? And, and so if you go back further, though, where does courage come from? And, and it comes from, you know, core values or ethics or, you know, mm -hmm. a philosophy. And, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're lacking core values, you may not have courage, right? Because you don't have that foundation or that faith. And, and, and you know, faith, you can think about it in, in, you know, in a spiritual sense, obviously God. Or you can just think about it, just having the faith in yourself, the confidence in yourself. Um, and so I just think, you know, the leadership just lacks courage. Um, you know, and I see that, you know, let's just, you know, keep it in business, I, I think, specifically. And then if you go politically, I just feel like all of them, regardless of what side you're on, they're just chasing headlines. They just want to. You know, they just want to be the next, you know, TikTok star. I mean, you know, I, know. Again, I don't care what your political persuasion is. I just, you know, it's like, what are you doing? You know, are the problems getting solved, right? So, yeah, I yeah. think there's a lack of leadership and there's just a lack of courage. 
Yeah, I think it goes back to my open a little bit where you talk about, you know, integrity or trust or that sort of thing. How in the world can I trust you as a leader if you don't stand for anything? I mean, yeah. w- w- leaders around, the, what do you stand for? I- I- is it greed? Is it is it money for you? Is it power? What, those things are going to miss, they're, they're going to take you down the wrong path, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So how do we, how do we encourage youth today and younger leaders making the climb? Um, how, how do we, how do we encourage courage? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, you know, I guess it goes back to, you know, really understanding yourself. Uh, you know, what, what is it, uh, you know, in, you know, training and development, teaching leadership training. Uh, you know, we had an eight week course called leadership training for managers in the mm-hmm. Del Carnegie course. Uh, I guess I'm promoting, you know, Del Carnegie now, but you know, they, in that course, you're given these 30 cards, and they each have some kind of core value on it. And, you you know, it could be integrity. It could be faith. It could be family. You know, think of anything that could be of importance to you that's a core value. And the goal of it is, is you get them to pair the 30 down to 8. Pair the 8 down to 4. And the goal of it is, is to get down to 2. You know, and... You know, what you find out is when I did that at 25, the two words, and I don't remember the two words that I pared it down to on those cards. Yeah, I got you. Were, but they were different than they would be at 35. Right. right? And because I think there's an evolution that takes place in, in leaders and just, you know, us as natural humans. And so, but but you need, you still need to, you know, understand, you know, what are your core values? And, you know, something you always say, you, you got to stand for something, right? And or you and, fall you for know, anything, right? Yeah, yeah, you'll fall for anything. So you got to stick to something. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, I just think too, you know, one of the things I've been thinking about for, you know, future guests and I've got a guy coming on from uh, our hometown who, um, long story short, uh, was a mentor to me when I was, um, 12 years old. And you think about the, how heavy that is. If you really look back when you're 51 years old and you say, man, who had an impact on my life going back to when I was 12 years old. And there are those people that take the time and that, that, that give a crap and want to influence young people to pursue their dreams and to be all they can be. And sometimes tell them the hard truth. And we're going to talk to to that gentleman here in a couple of weeks, but uh, isn't that powerful? I mean, in in encouraging youth. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It is. You know, you know, a leader um, that I had when I was working, you know, after I got my associate's degree and I was doing, uh, I was a maintenance technician. Uh, But this particular guy, you know, we're working on, you know, electricity and, and, you know, stuff that can kill you, right? Conveyor lines and things. And, you know, he was a type of leader that wanted you to make a decision for yourself. So me being young, mm-hmm. I take apart a gearbox, you know, let's just say a gearbox, and, you know, I got to put it back on the conveyor line. And, and, and I would start to do it a certain way, and I would say, is this the right way? And he would say, I don't know, is it? And it was just that little things like that he was always doing, you know. And eventually, you know, I started paying attention more, you know, because mm. I, I was kind of knee-jerk, right? And you can't be knee-jerk in that business. And so, but he had his way of coaching me along the way and teaching me um and i don't know if it was just innate in him but you know obviously i'm still talking about it today uh 25 years removed from it and so you know it still had a Mm. a wow i think back to your performance and i could see that in you so often i think what i took advantage of as a leader and i think 
you do take advantage of your greatest talent on your team sometimes. Um, I don't think it was for me anything that wasn't pure in any way. It was, hey, look, you know, I've got a talent. I need to ride that talent the best I can. And you did. You were really good at coming up with solutions and ideas. And, and sometimes you were passionate about that, right? And, and I think that that's, that's really important. I just wonder, you know, as you think about young people coming up, I'm not just talking about teenagers now. I'm, I'm thinking about, hey, look, we were both in our 20s and 30s as we grew a career. You know, what advice do you think comes to mind for leaders specifically, not just employees and performers, but for people that are in charge, like you were thrown into this leadership stuff. And by the way, folks, he was successful with that. Um, I'm just curious, what advice would you give young people? You know, you, you get impatient. You know, you, you want it all now. And um, how do you get there? Yeah. Well, I mean, it goes back to, what, you know, something you always say. You, you're not going to get there on your own. Um, you know, again, it's the the thing I used to tell leaders all the time is let's pretend it's it's Monday. And, um, you know, and you got 20 people on your team and, and they all got sick the night before and they called in and, and no one shows up on Monday. Right. And I asked the leaders, does the work get done? And we know the answer to that. Right. No, That's right. That's because right. they're not there. And then I followed up and say, OK, same scenario, but your team all shows up on Monday, but you got sick on Sunday night. And so you don't show up on Monday. Does the work get done? And their answer is, yeah, more than likely. Right. It should. And. You know, the way I respond is, okay, so you need them more than they need you. Amen. <laughs> and so it's having that mentality that, you know, as a leader, you need them more than they need you, right? Oh, and I'm not taking gosh. anything away from you as a leader, but mm, the work's no. not going to get done. Wow, that is well said. You know, we always talk about it. nothing I say here is novel or, you know, it's the, you know, it's Captain Obvious stuff a lot of times. But I tell you, in this world today, we need reminders. We stand on their shoulders, you know, yeah. and, and I, you know, I always I had some success as a leader. But, Brian, I tell you, I was a simple Simple kid from Kentucky with, you know, um, a C plus average coming out of high school too, you know, and yeah. I will just tell you that, um, I never could do a thing by myself. Yeah. I was always with you guys and many others around me, but let me give you some props and it's something you could speak to really quick. I know that this is folks, God's honest truth. And I don't have to tell this guy good stuff to make him feel good or anything. It's just the truth. I can remember pulling up pretty early in the morning. I'd have to drop my kid off in high school. Um, and I'd pull in, I don't know, 730 or something. I thought I was a pretty good employee. Well, guess who was already there every single day? This guy always there first. And it was already well into a cup of coffee and already into a project. Brian, speak to that because that's who you are. But it's not just about you. This is about encouraging other leaders to be the best they can be. What what was with that philosophy? Yeah, again, I, I just think, you know, the leader, you know, has to be out in front, right? I mean, the, you know, it's, it's, it's leadership, right? Meaning you're leading, right? And, yeah. and so, you know, the first person you have to lead is yourself. Uh, and so leading yourself well, and, and, you know, this could be a whole nother topic, but, yeah. you know, I think, you know, what I see, you know, again, I, I was, uh, you know, with Dell Carnegie, I worked with a very large manufacturing company in uh, Southwest Florida. And so oftentimes this was a window, uh, hurricane window manufacturing. And so oftentimes they would promote someone who was building windows yesterday into a leadership or supervisor position or a team lead position, you know, the following week. And, and so one of their missions in that training was to train these people up to have, you know, better leadership skills. And so they would come into my class and, you know, part of our, our course is they have to give up, they have to get in front of the, court, the other participants and give examples on how they're applying the material. 
Mm-hmm. And so they would, the, these, these folks that were just promoted would sometimes get in front of the room and they would, they would cuss, right? Because that was just manufacturing mentality. Culture. Mm-hmm. That was the culture. Nothing yeah. against them and, and, you know, nothing against cussing, you know, but mm-hmm. as a leader, you can't do that, right? You've got to lead by example. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, whether it's showing up first, leaving last, you know, cussing, you know, setting the, the standard, you know, I mean, whatever you want the standard to be, it's up to you to set it, you know, you're, you're mm-hmm. the pace setter. Right. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's well said. Leadership. Yeah, it's that whole earnest thing I talked about earlier. You know, if you if you're kind of true to thyself and you have core values and you have standards about you, um, I think people come to expect that. But it, it makes me think as I'm talking to you here, going a little bit kind of off script a little, if you will. But um, it's kind of a strange question because I was your boss for quite a while. Um, I always said we were a partnership and we always have been, but the reality yeah. was I was in charge whether I liked it or not. But you, and so you did something to manage me, you know, after I left you guys, I went to a company where I had a boss, a, a director who challenged me to manage up. Right. And, and I thought about that a lot because I thought I was pretty good at managing up. Right. Yeah. And it made me better. It made me continue to be conscious about managing up. And I'm wondering, a lot of times I think you manage me. A lot of times I think you earned trust, there's that word, with our executive team. And I wonder, where did that, how did you do that? Was that a strategic way about you? Was it just how you were brought up? Was it straight effort? How did you earn the trust of the highest level people in our company? Man, I tell you what, I mean, that is off script here. And I'm just trying to think, you know, if, if we try to dissect it, you know, what, what are the things that have to be done? Mm-hmm. Um, and it just kind of makes me think about, you know, a couple of things. And, and you may have heard along the way, you know, if you're going to spend some time with, with your boss, mm. you know, make sure you're prepared, right? You know, yeah. and whether it's, you know, you're going to spend 10 minutes with them, you know, we're putting that time and that effort into, you know, knowing that their time is limited. But so spending the time to prepare. So when you do go on that conversation, what are we going to talk about? Right. Absolutely. And, and get to the point. Right. Um, yeah. And then, you know, I think it, it goes back to, you know, spending the time. Right. Um, you know, with them, you know, uh, you know, we talk about trust and, you know, there's a book called Speed of Trust written by Stephen Covey Jr. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it's a great book. Uh, It's a little overwhelming on how deep you can actually go on trust. Uh, But, you know, the bottom line is, is when there's high trust, speed can be uh, expedited. When there's low trust, things slow down, right? And I think you can look at our political uh, nature in our world right now and see that they don't trust each other, right? And it slows everything down. But with high trust, speed can be expedited. We can speed things up. We can get to the point quicker. We can say things quicker, right? When there's trust. When there's not trust, you can't. so I think 100%. those things, you know, <laughs> 100% agree, uh, you know, could, could have said it any better, but it, again, you just did this, but it's, it's, it's more important to influence those that are listening to this today, especially those who are still experiencing some of this climb thing. I talk about, um, I talk sometimes about fear and when you have fear, you often are facing a loss down the road and when you embrace that fear and you know sometimes you got to stare fear in the face right and 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 go right after it and one of the things i noticed about you is that we we came up with you know some pretty tough characters and one one of them in particular we both know who i'm talking about and you 
I, no. I would tend to be a little bit more shy with that guy. You were a little bit more aggressive and a little more confident with that guy. And your results were better because I think that he respected the fact that you would come right at him and you would give him solutions and ideas and not, you know, be back on your heels. You know, yeah. I told this story on the leadership drills before, you know, um, he said to me, be more offensive, not more defensive. And it really bothered me, but it made me better. He was teaching and, um, and you're right. You came into those conversations prepared. We both had a mutual boss who said, you know, look, here's my advice to you. It's a little extreme, but I tried to practice it. And, you know, I'm talking about Jim and if Jim's listening, uh, Hey, thanks for the advice. Jim said, Hey, if I've got a one-on-one with my boss, I'm going to spend one hour preparing for that one hour meeting. And I'm going to be ready and I'm going to have the data and I'm going to have ideas and questions because when you're not prepared, he's going to pounce on you. Yeah. That's- yeah. Well, I mean, obviously being, being prepared and, and, and you know, it, it really goes back to confidence too. You know, if, if mm. anytime you've had the opportunity to kind of, when you know your business well, right, you really know that, inside the out you, you you've thought about it backwards and forwards it gives you confidence right mm-hmm. you you've already gone through this scenario so i think you're naturally going to be more aggressive i think when we're passive we're not as confident right you know i think about real estate investing you know when i bought my first rental property you know it took me much longer and i wanted to make sure i looked at everything uh, you know, you get the home inspection, you walk in, you, you do all these things because you're, you're not as confident. Now, you know, some 17 years removed, I was uh, telling someone, I think the last three houses I bought, I didn't even walk through them before I bought them because I had someone else do it and I was confident, right, in mm-hmm. my decision making. And so having that confidence is, is pretty, you know, and, and I think that's what, and, and, and the piggyback off of that, though, I know some people that are listening to this probably don't want to hear this, but, you know, with the pandemic and this whole work from home nature, and, you know, both of us work from home now, mm-hmm. but we're not in a daily leadership, you know, grind position where it's up right. to us to cast the vision and to spend time with with our people but mm. when we were working together i got a lot of time to spend with you and you know our you know our other leaders in our company and i think that helps as well and and that's something that's lacking today um that i think young leaders if you are in a work from home situation you know, I know it's great and you may have autonomy, but I, I just don't think you can, you know, especially for 25-year-old Brian or 28-year-old Brian, I just don't know if I would have been that good working from home. And I definitely wouldn't have developed the way mm. And it wouldn't have been as fast either if I would have been sitting at home trying to lead, lead a team on my own, you know? 100% agree. And uh, boy, I get excited about that topic and we could, I know you're going to be back in the future. Uh, we could talk more about that. Yeah. Uh, you know, not, not that we got to watch the clock on these podcasts. It's my, my podcast. I can do whatever I want. Right. But I, you know, my producer tells me I got to try to stay on time. So I'm going to try to stay on time here, but you know, going back to, we were talking earlier about that guy who took the time with me as a 12 year old kid, you know, one of the points I really want to make with this. Um, moving forward in whatever content we produce is to talk about mentoring, you know, and, and uh, mentoring for me has been hit or miss in my life, if I'm being honest. And, uh, you know, I think there were times I've been, I was searching and didn't have the mentors that I needed all the time. And I'd like to say that, you know, it was this perfect world and that I had all these amazing coaches and mentors that that's not true. And, yeah. um, I know I tried to serve as a mentor to you, um, along the way until I make jokes now that, Hey, you know, 
now you mentor me, you know, and that's great. That's the way it should be. But I wonder if you could touch on that really quick. You know, mentoring folks is so powerful to find one if you're a leader making that corporate climb right now. And Ryan, what are your thoughts around that topic? Yeah, it, you know, I think, you know, five, obviously, you know, in, in our relationship, you know, you, you land in a situation and, you know, we obviously instantly connected and, um, you know, we were trying to do big things and it just, it was so synergistic, right, in so many ways. And it was the, you know, it was really the, you know, what's the old saying, you know, when the student is, is ready, the teacher will appear, you know, that kind of scenario. And that's really, really what happened. Well said. Um, you know, you can't rely on that, though. Uh, and so, you know, whether you look for it internally in your organization or you go external, it's really up to you to go find it. Um, yeah, I noticed you, know, you even you even t- call mentors your authors. There's are there are authors out there that you refer to as mentors. Yeah, yeah I mean, and 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 they give you one side of it, right? They can give you you know that intellectual piece or that education piece, mm-hmm. right? And then someone you know that you see on a daily basis can give you really that um, you know hands on technical, you know, and 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 for me. For the growth that I had, it really took both. Um, and, yeah. and then when you start to teach it, right, um, you know, they say, you know, when you teach, you learn again. And so if it becomes something you're passionate about, you want to continue to learn more about it. Mm. Well said. And I think, friends, I think you can't be afraid to fail along the way with whatever advice or challenges these these mentors give you because, you know, it's true what they say, you know, when you, you fail, you learn. And and, uh, and I've seen Brian do that along the way. And it, it's interesting. You know, I still try to give sound advice to you, for example. Uh, you know, we were sitting on a beach here recently, and, you know, I said something to the effect of this is what I'd like to see from your career moving forward. Well, you know, you think about it, you go, who, who the heck is he? You know, I'm doing better than he is. Or whatever, you know, but I think that ego thing is what gets people in trouble as leaders. And I know I've been in trouble with it in our relationship before and many other relationships. And I'm not nearly the ego guy. A lot of you that are listening to this have probably dealt with in your life, but we all deal with it as leaders. And we always try to give the advice to check that ego at the door and be coachable. Right. And, and to find a mentor, find somebody who will tell you the truth and isn't afraid to do that. Right, Brian? Yeah, that's the key. You know, again, you know, you got to have the trust in that mentor and that mentor has got to be willing to give yeah. you that hard feedback. And, and obviously you were, mm-hmm. um, you know, that was when I was taking notes today, I was thinking about, you know, where is, the lack of leadership coming from and it is part of it is leaders are not telling the truth no you know no and it's, so it's sort of in the snowflake world that way isn't it yeah snowflake world and <laughs> you gotta have the hard conversations with people um, i think so and yeah, if you're not I... willing to do that leadership's not for you uh, no and not a, and, and sure there's a right way to do it right and you, you know, you could probably talk about it at length. You know, you're really good at it, but you got to do it. And if you don't, you're never going to grow as a leader. No, and I bring all that stuff up, and some of it may even be sappy stuff, but because you you were super good at it, and you've always been good at improving yourself. And one of the things that you've invested in, literally. Uh, for many years now, um, and I've watched the growth. You by far surpassed me, uh, and that is reading and um, consuming content. Um, and so I want to ask you specifically, if you could. I know it's not 
your favorite top, topic these days to read about, but you've done a ton of it. And that's leadership books that, you know, I had a, a lady just two weeks ago who listens to the videos on LinkedIn and she said, can you give me some books to read? And I developed a list of my top five favorite leadership books. And I know you volunteered to do some reviews and stuff on these podcasts uh, down the road. But today, really quick, what could you think of a, a couple of quick books that come to mind that are your faves that somebody could go out and read and benefit from? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mentioned the first one just because we were talking about trust, right? The Speed mm. of Trust, yeah. uh, which is a leadership book, but, you know, it's really trusted, you know, if you're in sales, right, creating trust with someone else. It could be, you know, working in a company, creating trust with your colleagues. Uh, I mean, so it, 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 it's not leadership specific, but, you know, it, it, mm. it will benefit you. Um you know, the other book that I would recommend just right off the top of my head is something called The Leadership Challenge. Okay. Uh, you know, if you look that up, it'll pop up. Uh, I want to—I don't want to mess up. It's a double author. It's two authors that, that co-authored it. I want to okay. say Kuhn and Posner, I believe, are their last names. But it's called The Leadership Challenge. It's a great book, but it gets into... Uh, it's it's one of the you know top ranked leadership books, um, and so I would I would definitely uh, recommend that one. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think. You know, obviously you talked about John Maxwell. I talked about yeah. Maxwell. I would go back to some of his earlier books. Oh, uh, same. Honestly, and not necessarily you know the stuff that uh, you know has been. Not to say that it isn't any good, but go back to some of the earlier stuff and start with that. Uh, you know, yeah, it, I, it, I always recommend the 21 Laws of Leadership. You know, for me, to this day, yeah. it's still one of my favorite of all time. Yeah. Um, and then I'm trying to, you know, there's a book that isn't really popular that you won't hear about very much. But it's, it's a, a book called Coaching for Improved Performance. And so, again, leading, managing, coaching, all that goes together. Yep. Uh, and this book is really good on the right way to coach uh, mm. and to coach up your employees. It really gives a great template. But mm. uh, if you look at it, it's called Coaching for Improved Performance. Phenomenal book. Wow, folks, go out and get that. I will tell you that uh... – Professional development is critical. Reading is critical to your development. And uh, get out there and consume some new ideas and some new content from people. By the way, I want to mention that just to remind you, you're listening to the Leadership Fan Podcast. And our guest today is Brian Willett, a uh, guy who's done a little bit of everything. And uh, when I talk about his leader, you know, reading books, man, this guy reads, I think, a couple of books a month, uh, if not more. Uh, so what we want to do with you, Brian, if we could, as we come down the stretch, you and I can always go, man, in a couple hours that we wanted to, um, just to wrap rapid fire here to try to finish out uh this interview you know if you think about politics quickly you ready for this uh if you have an all-time leader somebody who comes to mind quickly you know that you admire as a leader gosh quickly i mean um i mean it's just gonna have it's gonna have to be ronald reagan i mean yeah man good one yeah. yeah, I, I would mean, go Lincoln Reagan, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, Churchill obviously wasn't mm. American, you know, here. It's okay. But, you know, but what he did and and was able to do uh, is impressive, too. So, yeah. okay. you know, I'm just trying to think of a, a leader today that really jumps out. Uh, and it's tough. It's tough, Yeah. Well, you know, speaking of not American, I mean, Jesus Christ wasn't American either. And that's the greatest leader I've ever you never seen in my life. So, right, uh, right. you know, doesn't have to be American for sure. How about sports leader? Can you think of a sports leader that comes to mind that you admire? Yeah, I'm going to go old school again. I'm going to go Vince Lombardi. Ooh, uh, why, why Lombardi? Yeah, just, you know, they talked about, you know, Lombardi, how he uh, – he was hard on his 
hard on his players, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then they always talked about he would come over afterwards and, you know, make good with you, if you will. Do something where he showed that empathetic side. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, but he was, you know, he was pretty rough. I mean, he was yeah. going to hold you I always know that famous. I always remember that famous clip. What the hell is going on around here? You know, and he was just yeah, he was tough as nails, but still, he. I think the way you might say that is, you know, he would have the iron fist, but he had a velvet glove around it. And uh, so, okay. Um, and by the way, I thought you might say Nick Saban, but you didn't. Uh, similar kind of mentality there. I I would like to hope that he knows how to put his arm around players too. Yeah. Um, you know, advice, quick advice, like rapid fire advice for young leaders making the climb out there. You lived it. You you took the climb, you know. Um, talk to me about advice you would give. Uh, well, first of all, I would say if, if you don't want to help other people, mm. don't go into leadership. That's right. If you don't want to serve, then, then you're in the wrong then job. Don't go into leadership, uh, because that's what you're going to be doing. And if you don't like to do that, don't don't go on the leadership. But if you are in leadership already and you do care about other people, um, then then you know the biggest thing I can tell you is 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 to make sure you're leading by example, doing what you say you're going to do. Mm-hmm. You know, finding that mentor either inside your company or outside the company, and then you know more important than anything is continue to learn. I mean. Um, you know, what's funny is I can tell when, when I'm not reading, I don't have any fresh thoughts or ideas, you know, I I become Mm -hmm. really stagnant and when I'm reading, it helps, helps me provoke, it provokes thought. I mean, uh, that I don't know if you can get by watching a, you, I mean, you can probably get it by watching a YouTube video, but when you pick a topic and you go deep in on it. You know, mm, um, yeah, and, and and read what someone else has already laid out for you, right? I just think it's hard. It's hard to beat. You know, I, um, I love those aha moments. A lot of times, if you all follow me long enough, and Brian has, I will always say unapologetically, I'm a simple Kentucky kid. You know, I was brought up simple, blue collar kind of family, and you know, I just kind of hang on simple truths that I hear. And then I repeat them often and I, and I live by them often. And, and I think that for me that works. Uh, so you could read an entire leadership book and if you get, you know, two or three great points that you can go to war with, Hey, I think you're, you're a winner. Don't you, Brian? No, absolutely. I mean, again, I think back in my leadership climb, you know, the things that moved us forward that as a team, you know, as far as, you know, vision casting, right, which is part yeah. of leadership, really came from an idea that I picked up somewhere, you know, along the way. And it's not that I don't have an original thought, but, mm-hmm. you know, when you take one idea and you build off of it, you know. Mm, absolutely. Take and get them involved in it. They'll make it even better. Well, first of all, you know, I want to say to the the listeners out there, Brian's always trying new things. And, you know, one of the things he's really become good at over the years uh, is writing. You know, he's an author, and I know that he writes a blog. Um, I know that he consumes a lot of content out there. And so, first of all, Brian, I want to thank you for being here today. Uh, You know, I knew you would be, you know, uh, you're always there for me. But you have a lot of great things to say, and I know we're going to do this more in the future. At least I hope we will. But I want to give you a chance, if I could, just to talk about, I mean, gosh, you're into fitness. You're into so many things. Talk about how people can find you and how they can read your work, um, how they can network with you. Any of that would be great. Well, I mean, the easiest way probably to connect is probably on LinkedIn. Uh, Look me up, Ryan Willett. Uh, That would be the easiest way. Um, And then, you know, as far as, you you know, obviously my blog is there, but, you know, you can – you can look up the blog. It's called penniesintofortunes.com. 
Nice. Uh, Penny spelled P-E-N-N-I-E-S into I-N-T-O fortunes.com. So, um, but, you know, when you mentioned writing, you know, the reason I started writing is I was talking about leadership or talking about sales and that writing out something yeah. gives you confidence when you're in front of a group or in front of your team you've already fleshed it out. You're not getting up there for the first time. And so that's really what sparked my writing was I wanted to create more confidence for myself and by writing it out, because uh, again, you mentioned mentors, but you know, we, he always said, you know, your head, if you're thinking about it, it's messy and you got to get that mess on the paper into some kind of coherent thoughts. And, and that's really that's right. part of the reason why I started writing or, you know, yeah, I would encourage you guys to read his blog. Uh, I don't read it all the time, but when I do, I'm always, I guess, because I know the author so well, too. It's kind of different for me, but uh, I encourage you to get out there and read his work. And Brian's a good guy to network with, for sure. If you're into uh, investing in real estate, he's also strong on that front. Well, Brian, I'd love to talk some more, but uh, the producer is tugging at my ear here. And so uh, we're going to have to wrap this up today. Thank you so much, my friend. Uh, I appreciate you more than you know. Um, friends, that's all the time we have for today. I want to just you know, continue to listen and support the Leadership Fan Podcast as we grow and we evolve week to week. I'd ask, guys, if you would like and share and follow the Leadership Fan Podcast on any of the platforms where you consume podcasts and, and content like this. And we're excited about next week. We've got some great guests coming up, some folks that you guys will certainly know of as well. Uh, so until next week, I want you to go out and make some big ripples out there with your people and in your companies. And don't forget your communities until then. God bless. Mm -hmm.